All right. Hello. What is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you live on Skype with two of my buddies. I have none other than Man on Fire. What What are your numbers today, Kevin? Uh, I'm just Kevin right now. Oh, Kevin. Not 906, I think. I'm pretty sure that's him. And then we also have none other than Man with No Face, Dirt Sheet Danny himself. Oh, Phenomenal X. What is going on? He's not here. All right. <laughs> All right. We have him, Mr. Sick Nasty of the uh, YWC Fantasy Football League. Danny, what is going on? Not much. Nothing much. Nothing much. All right. We have here a thrown together pay per view uh, for, for TNA, guys. Uh, what did you guys think of the booking of this pay per view just being basically thrown together in the last 20 minutes of live impact on Thursday? Yeah, so uh, we got the Jets and the Bills, you know. I really think the Bills are really overrated this year. It fucking pisses me off. Uh, oh, shut up, Tebow. Uh, Revis is going to definitely shut down Stevie Johnson. Uh, I think the Jets are going to get this win. Uh, Kevin? Hey, well, you know what? Honestly, you brought up a good point, because I never really thought about this, Kevin. Kevin, you can answer this question, but what do you think about TNA going up against week one of football? For their for a pay per view like this, like are aren't they like the deck is stacked against them right now? I think TNA's fan base and their audience is kind of like WWE's in a way. It's always going to get around the same kind of buys, and the only the only time like we'd say either lockdown because that show was really hyped, really well built, or Destination X, which is all uh, kind of the. Uh, it caught the proverbial indie fan because Austin Aries is getting his world title shot. It caught those extra fans, and it's not going to get, like, you know, it got some extra buys, but it's not going to be outstanding. I think it's the same thing uh, with Monday Night, or not Monday Night Football, uh, Sunday Football, uh, because the same fans are going to watch the same thing. Um, I'm not saying that the people that watch TNA consistently and always buy the pay-per-views are not football fans. Uh, I'm just saying it's probably it might be down the buy rate, but I think it's I think it's just going to be normal. To be perfectly honest. Alrighty, alrighty. Before we get down to talk about this whole you know TNA, we'll talk some TNA chat. From watching the show on Thursday, did anybody else mark out huge by Mike Tanay saying a name that I never thought he would say in the history of wrestling? Dave Batista. Um, <laughs> I know that he was just on the following up show of MMA Live, but I, to me it was a big deal that they said Batista on Impact. For anybody else? I didn't even see that. What? No, neither did I. Oh! Yeah, we're bad fans. I was, I was marking out. I was going bananas. And, and then this is more towards Danny than it is towards Kevin. But uh, news out right now. Our buddy Devin is out of TNA. What do you feel about that? Man, I mean, <laughs> the, the best way to go out is still being champion, you know, so no one else is going to take that title off of him. I dig it. <laughs> Do you really think he's done, Kevin? Is he just gone? They're just going to get rid of a title they've, they, they've had. They really have never shown respect to. This is the Legends title, World title, Television title all rolled into one. Oh, oh boy, what a prestigious belt held by, <laughs> held by Booker T. Uh, AJ, Styles, AJ Styles, Eric Young, uh, Kevin that, Nash. That's Kevin Nash. God, who can forget that? That English guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they're they're gonna lose a lot of fans. Since <laughs> Devin, Devin, but Devin. The guy's over, man. The guy. He watch when he debuts in WWE. Big video packages, everything. I honestly, in my back of my mind. I don't see him going anywhere without Bubba Ray. I don't see him being a draw on the indies. I don't see him going to WB. He has to take any offer TNA offers him for that guaranteed money. That's just smart. I say you sit him at home for a while. You bring him back as a member of Aces and Eights. He comes back with a reason to be there. And he has a title on his shoulder. And he says that nobody cared about it. Now, you know, he's, uh, he's a big deal again. That's just me. It's a long shot, but that's what I would do with him. In a perfect world, that'd be pretty cool. But uh, if Devon was going to resign, I think he would have. I think there's a reason that he didn't, whether it's family or maybe he wants to be like Maven and go sell uh, cat litter on infomercials. You never know. I'm not buying anything from that scarred up forehead. But anyways, <laughs> here we go. We're talking TNA No Surrender 2012. We'll start it out with, I guess, what is 
Well, yes, it's not really a grudge match because the grudge match is Magnus against Samoa Joe, but this is Rob Van Dam against Magnus. What are you thinking, Danny? Man, can it get any more random than that? They're building um, towards Magnus versus Joe. I mean, that is where they're going. So uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Magnus is picking up the win over Rob I mean, Van Dam. It's cool you can do that, but, like, you know, that tag team split up months ago. You can't, like, you visit that, like, five months later. It just doesn't make sense, I don't think. And we're, we're still waiting for our big beer money feud as well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin, who you got? Um, Probably Magnus, yeah. He needs momentum going in to face Joe at Bound for Glory. So. Easy, easy does it. There we go. From there, we'll go over to a good old X Division match. Our leader, our champion, Zima Ion, going up against Sanjay Dutt. Kevin, what do you see here? Uh, if Kevin will put down the fruit snacks. I can hear you. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, beef jerky, sweet and sour. Don't disrespect beef jerky like that. <laughs> but um, Sanjay, I don't know, Sanjay Dutt, was this like a last minute decision? I mean, Kenny King and uh, Zima were having a pretty good feud, and now they're doing Sanjay, so I don't. I don't understand that, I guess. I think they're doing the same thing um, they did with uh, Austin Aries, where he literally just fights someone different every time. Just uh, kind of just to put him on the map, put him on the top of the X Division, the way uh, Austin Aries did, where he just beat everybody clean, z on cheats, et cetera, et cetera. They'll probably, more than likely, do the same thing um, uh, with Zima Ion and then have him lose to Jesse Sorensen because it's just a perfectly told story. Told story, so I got uh, Mr. Poofy hair on this one. I, I got Zima as well, but I just feel bad for the guy you mentioned. I feel bad for Kenny King, the man who just seems like he's just left in the back. You know, like TNA makes this guy really like you know fuck over Ring of Honor, and uh, now he's not getting the, his X Division title. You know, he's actually had good matches with Ion in the past, and. Now he's just being looked over, and he's just another guy on the roster, pretty much. And uh, I don't know. I don't look at, at Sanjay's a legend of TNA. You know, he's been there for all this X Division stuff, but I don't see him today being somebody that holds that title. I, I don't see him as a as a credible defender to Zima Ion. I think they are just working his way to Sorensen, just trying to put him on the card so you remember him, you don't forget him, and then you always have the Sorensen in the back of your mind because of the injury at the pay per view. Anything else for that one? Uh, good match, I think. Pretty slam match. dunk, easy. <laughs> All right, from there we go to the chick match. Miss Tessmacher, the champion, going to get up against Tara, teacher versus student. I will honestly say, I didn't even know that um, the that Tara was still on the roster. Little alone, we were just talking about breakup feuds. This is a former women's tag team championship uh, team that uh, barely ever defended their titles. I don't even know if they have the women's title, the tag titles anymore, but. Here we go, Tess Mocker and Tara. What do you guys think? Tara, Tara turns heel, I guess. That would make sense, right? But you're not gonna put the title on her. Well, no, you don't put the. I mean, she gets jealous if she can't beat her. Turns heel on her, makes sense. I don't know. What about you, Kevin? Man, I'm just praying on my knees for a fucking wardrobe malfunction one of these days with Miss Tess Mocker. <laughs> I, I'd pick her to win any day. <laughs> Bay.com, uh, Brooke Adams. You can see her rolling around naked in the sand. Really? Yeah. yeah. Whoa, we got, we got Wait, breaking news no, 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 here. I, I, I learned that from Ravi. Wait, repeat the website? Tube8.com. Tube8, you have to spell 8? No, no, just put number 8. Tube8.com. Uh, if you're under 18, kids, get your parents' permission. Wait, Whoa. Wait, what's the video called? <laughs> put Brooke Adams in. All right. Well, we might get me. We might be uh, losing track of our uh, prediction video going on here, but we might be getting a live review from Kevin. So this might be uh, this might be better than anything else. We're getting Look at Breach trying to create anything he can from this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to save us here. We're drowning here. We might be losing Kevin. He might be. Let's go. <laughs> he might be dropping off any time. Uh, from here we go on. Uh, we have a rematch from a couple months ago. I honestly can't remember what the hell uh, show it was, but this was a big uh, big deal. A couple months ago, AJ Styles, yeah. Kurt Angle going up against the World Tag Team Champions. Of the world, Christopher Daniels and Kazarian. Uh, last match uh, w was good. Uh, I think a lot of people thought it wasn't what it was supposed to be. Uh, maybe they're going to go out there and give us uh, the, the great match here. What do you guys think? Uh, 
I heard uh, Angle got injured at a house show, so hopefully he'll be able to go um, tonight. I know, um, I know firsthand that he worked Dalton, Georgia on Thursday, but he did not work uh, Atlanta at the Tabernacle on Friday. So I'm not sure if yeah, he's hurt he or not. Couldn't, couldn't walk out of the ring or something. Mm. Um, but, I, uh, I mean, if he's healthy, you know, I'm expecting another great match. I just figured that they didn't want him working back-to-back days. That was the only, that was the only thing I could guess because he, he was at the Atlanta show. He came out, he gave a speech talking about winning the uh, the Olympics there and then was attacked by Aces and Eights and then beat up all the guys that were there. Oh, well, who knows? What about you, Kevin? Who are you picking? Uh, let me close this tab real quick. No. Uh, <laughs> it's good, right? I think, yeah, yeah. How many stars, Kevin? How many? It's. I think I think if Kurt Angle is injured, they'll probably just throw us Kaz and AJ. Uh, but I hope he's not. But honestly, I really do think this could steal the show because these guys, these are four of the four of the best wrestlers in the company, four of the best wrestlers probably in my top twenty in the world right now. So. I, to, to me, from, from watching the show, Christopher Daniels and Kazarian had a great match. A great, great match with Hernandez and um, Chavo Guerrero. Really? And, yeah, that yeah, was really, really good. At the end of the match, um, basically, uh, Christopher uh-huh. Daniels and Kazarian cheat to get the, uh, get, get the win. Hogan comes out and congratulates them on the win. Does not give the Hernandez and Chavo team a... Uh, a match of the pay-per-view gives it to AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. I have no idea what, what, what happened there. Normally your GM, if, if they cut out and kept somebody cheating, would let the match continue or, you know, overturn the match and give the uh, give the win to the other guys. But for some reason, Hogan wanted to help these guys out and book a pay-per-view match at the same time. Um, but... I don't know. I don't see AJ and Angle winning the titles because I don't no. want to see the end of Daniels and Kazarian, who are a big part of TV right now. Even though the whole feud with AJ and Claire or whatever her name was is all over with, um, I, I just don't want to see Daniels and Kazarian end. I mean, they've they've been great for months. Even though the the Angle started out great and you know ran its course at the end, uh, I just I don't know. I I don't feel like AJ and Angle will be holding the titles. That's just me. Well, I mean, you have TNA's biggest show like a month away, and you know, I don't, I can't see anything being the payoff for this feud. I mean, what can they really do that they haven't done? I don't, I don't really know. Mm. All right, from there we'll go to, I guess, what is the main event? I'm not even sure if this is the title match or not, but it's Austin Aries. He's, <laughs> get, he's gonna fight any member of Aces and Eights. Uh, it's for, Armbreaker. It's the big guy. It's Armbreaker yeah. slash it's Luke Gallows. That is that who? Because I'm looking at the guy in the ring and I can't tell who the hell it is. To me, Vic told me Vic told me it wasn't him because he didn't have tattoos. Yeah, and and to me, Luke Gallows was taller than the guy that was in the ring, and that guy seemed wider than Luke Gallows as well. I couldn't put my finger on who the hell the guy is. Maybe it's Vance Archer. I know it's not him. I know it's not Robert Roode. I have no clue who that. They beat the hell out of some guy that was the grip. I don't even know who that guy was. I, I'm lost on who these Aces and Aids guys are. All I know is the guy with the long hair is fucking Domino. Nothing wrong with that. I'll take some Super Domino any day. I, I don't like Knox is in there too, right? I did. Really, that'd be sweet. Anybody who's out there, I, I know the freaking A88 personally apologized for getting Mike Knox fired from WB. That's just me. I'm just letting that out there. But I don't know. Uh, when, when they did Nexus... Almost a lot of people watched the first season of NXT, and they were invested on who these guys were, so you knew who these guys were when they ran in. When Aces and Aids is finally revealed as being all these sort of, I guess you can say internet stars that people care about, like, you know, because they're friends with uh, CM Punk and Cole Cabana and all that, like, you know, Luke Gallows, Super Domino, and other names like that, do you think people are going to care or just look at them like, what the fuck is this? I mean... What's their long-term uh, solution here? You know, once the storyline's done, where are they going to go? Yeah, pretty Honestly. much. What do you see him doing, Kevin? Half of them uh, get released. <laughs> um, I don't know. Kevin probably knows more. Yeah, I do know more. Here we go. Um, I was actually going to call into Brian and Dave today, but then uh, and ask this question, like, what's next for Aces and Eights after they're defeated? 
because we all know all that shit's going to end at Bound for Glory, which it should, because if it goes any over, then I just don't think it'll, it'll, it won't be fresh anymore. It'll just become stupid and repetitive. But um, what I think is going to happen is they're going to take the talented ones out. They're going to unmask them and they're going to make them like the, uh, like the Wade Barrett, the Daniel Bryan, not the Daniel Bryan, because I can't compare Luke Gallows to Daniel Bryan, uh, but uh, you know, like the, they're known as, oh, these guys tried to invade and they're just going to be heels and they're just going to be stuck in the mid card, which in a lot of senses isn't always a bad thing. Like, look at Wade Barrett. He's done real well for himself. And That's it, though. Uh, from Nexus, that's it. That's the only star they made. I mean, I would love to call Justin Gabriel a star. He Slater's on TV, you know, oh, almost every on. week. He Slater's the man. But I mean, like, who the hell else have they done? I mean, Nexus was, was one guy, Wade Barrett. That was it. That, that, that's all they did. It's a summer angle. This is TNA's uh, their summer angle. It's gonna make them. Uh, but Nexus ran know, all the way until uh, the next year at Money in the Bank. It was a whole year thing almost. You know, with CM Punk taking over. Oh come on, that Nexus didn't count. The new Nexus. I meant, I meant the invasion thing, the invasion <laughs> kind of angle, not the actual. Oh, okay. Thing. I just think that they're gonna put over Hogan, Sting, and whoever the hell else. <laughs> Uh, fights aces and eights in that like five on five whatever they're gonna do a bound for glory. He's gonna put him over. Um, it's gonna be fine. I know we've seen bad Hogan before, but I honestly am hoping for Hogan to to, to do a heel turn, join these guys, because uh, I just don't want to see us care about these you know five jobbers or however many there are in aces and eights, and then just you know come a match and then they're gone. You know, hey, you see you later. I I just I want something meaningful to come out of this. I don't want to be able to look back and be like, well, I guess I wasted a whole summer on the Claire angle uh, with AJ that, you know, produced nothing. And then basically Aces and Eights, which I kept thinking about more than anything, and that produced nothing as well. I mean, it has I want something produced out of this because I want TNA to grow and get better, not just be like the same old shit where it's like, oh, we cared about it for a couple months, but now they don't have anything anymore. I agree. All right, from there we go. Bound for Glory series. We were down to the championship matches. We have our final four. Uh, and I guess you can see the driver's seat is James Storm going up against Bully Ray, the newly re-signed uh, heel. Uh, what, what do you guys see happening here? Go ahead, Danny. Uh, what is it, James Storm, Bully Ray? Obviously, James Storm's going to win the hat. Yeah. I mean, can't be more obvious. I'm not a mathematician. I don't understand the points that well. I really like keeping the points until we get to the point when they really, really matter. But um, I don't know. They changed the rules on the countouts and the draws, and we haven't seen any yet. I honestly think that they changed the rules because they wanted it to come into place somehow, and I'm guessing one of these matches has to has to have that. If you remember last year, it came down to, I believe it was Robert Roode and Bully Ray in a match, and both of them had to get a submission uh, in order to move into the final match, or they would be eliminated, and they had a really good submission match at the pay per view. Um, I, I remember that. I just, I, I don't know what the points are. I know these final four guys are there, but um, I, I, I want a meaningful match. I'll, I'll pick James Storm to win this as well. Um, but um, and the next match is Jeff Hardy against Samoa Joe. Who, who, who are you Rich picking? Joe, Rick Gavin. <laughs> Own me, okay. I see it a little. I see it a little different. I see Bully Ray winning uh-huh. because we know Samoa Joe isn't beating Jeff Hardy because of Buck and Magnus. Yeah, he's gonna come fuck over. So you have Joe get fucked over by Magnus. You have Bully Ray upset James Storm via fucking either one of the Aces and Eights or Robert Root, and. To build up the James Storm and Robert Root feud, uh, or rebuild or whatever, and for Bound for Glory, and uh, or that's when we find out that Robert Root is like the the leader of Aces and Eights or whatever. But anyway, yeah, yeah, I'm with you there too. I, 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 when did when did Samoa Joe become a face? Like, because I guess Magnus is playing the heel. But, I mean, the whole the, the whole deal was Joe was being a heel, and now he's just being a heel who's getting beat up by somebody else. I have no clue what the hell he it is. He just got over. He got over. He's been over for years. They just don't want to push him, that's all. Okay. <laughs> got, re, re, got re-over as a face, because people would always give him a reaction, but he started getting over as a face, and they're like, well, I guess he's face now. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I, there's no way in the world they're going to do James Storm against Jeff Hardy. So, I mean, if, if they're going to do some sort of heel reveal, Storm has to lose in the first round. I, I don't see him going to, to Storm versus Joe because then Joe would have to win. Do you think there's any way in the world they'll do it? They'll do James Storm against Jeff Hardy? No, I can see it. No. I don't think so either. So I, I guess you have to pick Bully Ray against Jeff Hardy, and then you have Jeff Hardy win, and then have him fight for the, for the title at Bound for Glory against Austin Aries. That wouldn't make any sense at all. That wouldn't. Well, uh, I I'm just completely against that because you wouldn't have. The only way you would have a face versus face, uh -huh. if it's a match like Joe and Aries, it's just, it's just different because they're, it's more suspense of who's mm -hmm. going to win because they're both like amazing athletes, whereas Jeff Hardy's just all, either always the underdog or always the, he's the Rey Mysterio kind of underdog, where it's like, oh, I don't think he's going to win, and then when he wins, you're just not surprised because he fucking wins all the time. So it builds more suspense to have, even though we know if Bully Ray does win at all, he's not going to beat Aries at Bound for Glory. Still, and plus, what's they needed a motive to re-sign Bully Ray, and he needed a motive to stay. So here's my whole deal. If you remember last year's Bound for Glory series, I know Rude, you know, ended up winning the title the next. I believe it was the next Impact. He lost it. That he lost the Bound for Glory, and then he won it the next one. It was part of their whole yeah. ordeal to make you care about Robert Rude more. What is the point of the whole tournament to get down to the finish and then have the guy who wins and you put the guy over or have him lose? I mean, that that doesn't make sense to me. I just, and I don't see Bully Ray beating Austin Aries. I just, I don't understand, you know, why you make us care about this tournament and then, you know, it's kind of like, well, like the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble winner hasn't won the, the world title besides this past year since like 2006. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just lost. I'm lost here. All right. Um, any, any any other final thoughts you guys got? Yo, the Buccaneers suck, man. I don't Yo, know. Fuck the Jets. No, honestly, Breach, who do you take? The Jets or the Bucks? Come on. Uh, I, I want the Bucks, baby. The Bucks are my team last year, and I'm not <laughs> I'm not letting them go out the way they did. Josh Freeman is is a great quarterback. That is that is. I would love him to join the 49ers any day. Uh, I think they made a mistake by letting uh, Winslow go. I would have kept him uh, for, for the rest of his career, no matter how many uh, injuries he has. Yeah, but... like, and the Patriots are working. Hey, as long as it's warm weather, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i take Sanchez. I just It's just pretty stupid to have a quarterback like Sanchez in the cold weather the, the, the second half of the year. Sanchez improved numbers of Jeff on the couch. <laughs> All right, there we go. It is NFL kickoff Sunday. Tomorrow, as well as No Surrender 2012. Those are our predictions. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow after watching the show with a full review and uh, we'll let you know what we're going in a there. Cheap, uh, cheap way so you can get clicks. Who? You know, you're going to put that uh, cheap title in so people click on it? No, no Surrender 2012. That's what it is. Thank you very much. Right, peace out. Bye.